Hey everyone, my name is Dave. Welcome to the NTD Racing Speed Shop. Today, we're gonna to go ahead and check out this universal switch panel. We're gonna be using this in one of the new builds we got going on for our second Class 11 VW Bug. And what's gonna be unique about this build series is you'll be able to follow along and I will actually provide you with all of the files, CAD and all that kind of stuff in case you wanna build the exact same thing yourself. One of the hardest things I find to do with any vehicle build is making wiring look good. And uh, so I'm kind of hoping that this will clean it up a little bit, make it a little bit easier, make the dash look really cool also. So let's first go ahead and check out what's inside. I'm going to assemble it just to see how it works and make sure it is of the quality that I would want to put into one of my builds. And then we're going to put it into that new car. We're going to test it out. I'll let you know how that goes in the future. But first, let's go ahead and see what's inside the box. All right, so we got the uh, switch panel system universal. Uh, anyway, let's go ahead and see what's inside here. Looks like some instructions first off. Uh, some kind of a, a box for the, I'm assuming the relays. You have a big relay there to connect up a battery, a whole bunch of wires. Looks like the switch panel with a cord, an extension cord. I'm assuming to switch, connect those two things together. And then a whole bunch of buttons that will go to this. And let's go ahead and start assembling this with a battery and kind of see how it all works together to see how we'll put it into our new build. One last part found underneath here. I got a whole bunch of mounting brackets also. And these things are hefty. hefty. These are eighth inch plate steel. Um, you know, I would say like 11 gauge, almost even 10 gauge steel uh, back in here and a couple zip ties. And we'll see how all of these are used also. So let's go ahead and look at all of the components and then we'll kind of break each one down individually and and how they, they kind of work. So first, I guess you have the control panel here, and this has eight switches. It can have four switches or six switches. There's links in the description below for all of those. Um, I like the eight switch one to give you a little more options. And this thing comes with what appears to be about, once it's connected at about a 10 foot lead. So you can basically put this box right here about 10 feet away from wherever the switch panel is. This right here is where all of the fuses are. And this is where all the stuff kind of goes on. So you can see we have some wires here. I'll talk about how that's connected here in a second. I have some LEDs that I had in my shop. And these are just going to show you, represent the loads that we're going to use. So you can kind of see when the switches are on, when the switches are off. Um, and then you've got all of your fuses here and inside you have some relays and it looks like they have up to 30 amp fuses and all the way down to 5 amp fuses put in there. So obviously this thing can take a little bit of load. It also gives you a breaker here and it's one of those really cool breakers. I like these a lot and I think I'm going to start running these more in my trucks, especially for my fans and all that kind of stuff. Um, you push this button and the breaker is the circuit is now open uh, and so no power is going through or you just close it off or if you have any kind of a surge in power then that thing will open up and protect your system uh, also. And then in this case we have our battery representing our 12 volt source for the entire system. There's some other parts here. This is the cover that once this, once this is all done will go over top and this is a pretty robust piece of metal a really uh, it's solid metal cover and all the lines are supposed to go down the bottom we may or may not run that because this will be you know underneath the hood of the vw bug that we're going to be putting this system into there's also these brackets which uh, we pulled out of the box and it shows you in detail in the uh, directions on what you do with these brackets to you know mount this in different ways and also i'll just leave it at that Let's talk a little bit more specifically about how this thing is wired up. So uh, I have my positive, I have my negative. So the positive goes all the way to one side of the breaker and then the other side of the breaker, the positive continues to come out and that goes to the circuit board. The negative goes straight from the battery or the chassis or something like that. You can just mount this thing right to the uh, ground, right to the chassis and the chassis is grounded to the battery. And that goes right to this, this whole fuse and circuit board here also. And then what you can also see is that all of the loads, and this would be your lights, your horn, whatever it is that you have, have a place on them. And it has a place to either put in your positive or your negative. And you just use a Phillips head set screw to put those things in there and it clamps down pretty nicely and i don't see those things coming out and it looks like it's got plenty of room to put in 
you know, a 12, 10 gauge wire or something like that, maybe even greater than that for whatever you're going to run that power out to. Um, on this side, you have a plug here, which goes all the way to your control panel. And then you have this other plug right here, this other wire right here, which has to go to make this thing work. It has to go to a 12 volt positive and that's what turns the whole system on so this could be the wire that goes to your keyed power your accessory or a switch on your panel or something like that or you switch the whole thing on or off whatever that might be but this has got to get some power in some way now i have had this thing hooked up for a couple of days and it's still working and it hasn't killed my battery so i think that that works out uh, just fine um, going more into the switch panel uh, this thing, the way that you would mount it, is on the back side. You have some what I would call nut certs in here. And then inside the accessory, the little bag of nuts and bolts here with some fuses, you have some little studs. You would roll, the, you would put basically thread those studs into there and then match it up to your dash or wherever you're going to mount that. And you would uh, put that in there. There's probably some other ways you can mount this. I will, what I will do is I build the dash for the VW bug is I will go ahead and I will measure these points out. I'll measure this hole out and I will cut the holes for that into the new dash we're gonna make for our VW bug on the Langmuir Systems Crossfire XR. And I'll be catting that whole thing up using Fusion 360. So if you wanna see us do that, follow along, you know, like and subscribe, and especially hit the notification bell. That way you won't miss when we build the bug. And I'm gonna show you exactly how I do that whole thing if you wanna follow along with that build. It's gonna be one of those builds that if you wanna build it yourself, I'm providing you with everything you would need to know, uh, at least all the CAD and all this stuff for building roll cages and all the inside stuff uh, for that. All right, let's talk about a little bit of the functionality. Um, and this is really cool. Before I get into that, one more thing about the wiring. Uh, is I wire vehicles, you know, sometimes you, you send a positive signal out to whatever the thing is. Like, let's say, let's say you have a light. You might send one red positive wire all the way out to the light, and then the light would be grounded to the chassis. That, to me, would be, is what I would call a, a positive signal. Sometimes, uh, like, let's say our fans or something like that in the back, I would, I would signal it to ground. So I would actually send a ground out to a relay, and that relay would, you know, through there, it would have a positive, you know, locally at the relay. And then I would send with my switch, I would send a ground signal that turns the relay on, turns my fans on. Uh, and so what I did here is I represented one of these switches where it is positive into its terminal, but then it's negative uh, goes to this wire. This could be wired anywhere, the chassis or to the battery. And that shows you that a you don't need to put terminate both of the positives and the negatives on. At, the, at this whole junction right here, you could actually just send a positive out and have it you know, locally grounded all the way back to the battery, and that works. What does not work, however, uh, is the, and I kind of didn't think it would, but it, I wouldn't expect it to, but is it, it does not send a ground signal from this. So these switches only send positive signals. They will not send a ground signal. So like in my my case where maybe I send a ground signal to activate a relay to turn on a fan in the back, that's not gonna happen uh, with this system right here. You have to make a whole different switch or you have to switch your relay around to basically turn on with a positive signal. So you'd run a positive all the way back, locally ground the relay, uh, and then that would turn your relay on those kinds of things. So that can't be done with this system. It only sends out positive signals and then you can ground it anywhere. Let's get into the functionality of the switches. And some of the things that we want our switches to do and our switch panel to do while we're out there um, is you want them to be on with a click and then off with a click. You want them to be momentary. And then some other cool features I'm gonna show you is that this thing can actually flash things, which would be really useful for lights and those kinds of things. And you know, if it's on a boat or if it's on a race car, which we use you know, flashing lights all the time in our uh, race cars, or you can think of all the different applications where you want something to, uh, to flash. Let's see how all that works. And again, each one of these, I have I think eight lights here representing the eight different signals that I'm gonna send. And as you can see, as I hit a button, it turns on a light uh, corresponding to whichever fuse that is. And then the light, it stays lit up or on the switch panel red. I think it's really trick. Uh, inside here, you see some of them I have buttons. I put these little, uh, you know, these things that illuminate uh, in there and show you what they are. Like, like this is a, a piston here. And this is some kind of, I think a propeller, but it sure looks like a fan to me. 
Um, and so those are the things that we'll be using to kind of show you what the things are inside. And there's a whole, I think there's 50 different options that you can use. And as you can see, as I turn these things all on, the, they all light up red. It's really kind of cool. All the switches come on. And then if like, let's say this is the standard setup that I want to use. I always like, I'm, I don't want to hit every button every single time. I just want, when I hit one button, I want all these things to turn on. When I hit one button, I'll turn off. You can use the center button and it'll turn all the lights off. And it'll come all the way back on to the previous setting that you had uh, on there. Let's talk about some other things we wanted to do. So let's say we, we don't like the color. Let's say we want to change the color of these buttons. And what we would do is we would hold down on the center button. And then we would just go ahead and click through until we found the color that maybe we wanted out of those buttons. In this case, all green. You turn them off, turn them back on, and there they are, all green. Now let's talk about changing a little bit of the functionality of what these switches uh, do. In this case, to change the function of them, we're going to hit this button right here twice. One, two, and then they're going to all start flashing. And then now I'm going to say, if I hit it and it turns blue, and that becomes a momentary switch, like for example, uh, the start of a car or something like that. If I hit it twice, then that's gonna become a flashing switch. And if I hit it three times, and it becomes this purple color, then it's gonna be like an SOS signal is what it's gonna do. I'm gonna push it again. So as you can see, this one right here just becomes a flashing light. I can turn that one off and on. And then these over here, they're supposed to be flashing in SOS, which should be dot, 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 dash, 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 dot, dot, dot. I don't know that that's right. It's pretty close. There you go, SOS flashing. But more importantly, uh, these over here remain, you know, click on, click off. Uh, but what I like about these now is they become momentary switches. So now that we have all that set up, you can kind of see how we might have the car set up. We might have some flashing lights uh, in the back. We might have some flashing lights on our boat. We would hit this button right here. We would turn on our entire ignition system, and that could be our starter to start the engine. If you had a, a boat with two engines, and this could be engine number one, this could be engine number two, this could be start number one, and this could be start number two. So the next time you're gonna see this switch panel is when we go and put it into our new Class 11 VW Bug race car. Man, a pretty trick setup. I think wiring is one of the hardest things to do in a car and when you can use something like this to make it neat and I also think move the relays away from the tunnel of the car to where you have, you know, the clean up the tunnel, clean up underneath the dash, move the, the power out to where it's gonna be used. I think it makes it really easy just to make it a really nice, clean, electrical setup. If you are interested in one of these, you can get it in a four switch, six or eight switch uh, setup. The links for those are in the description below. So the next time you see this thing is when we're gonna put it into our new class 11 VW Bug, the second one we're gonna build. Can't wait to get to that. And I can't wait to show you. We'll see you next week.